something about your first meeting with Stephen King and Tolkien uh, about you as, as Barbara? So was it with a movie, with a novel, or I don't know? No, it was with a book, um, Pet Cemetery. Um, I was very young and very impressionable, and it made me fly a thousand miles on the air, and then um, I believe I saw Salem's Lot, and that again was absolutely fascinating. But when I read it, it all stopped, because it was the first time that I was, and I, I read a lot when I was a kid, but it, this was the first time that I was reading a book with a point of view of characters that were my age at that point and that were in situations of true danger um, and were active about it. They were fighting it. Um, I, I read uh, Pet Cemetery was my first introduction to him. Uh, but I, I, of course, I, before that, I was like 13 or 14 when I read, when I read that. But before that, I had seen The Shining, I had seen Carrie, uh, and who knows how many other movies uh, at that point, probably Christine, Cujo, uh, it's hard to tell now. So before I start working on the movie, uh, I assume that you, maybe you read the book uh, another time. So Four more for, times. Yeah, uh, because in my personal experience, I discovered that, uh, I read it too when I was like, 12 or 13 years old, but when I read it again as a grown-up, I've noticed all the all the themes that are in your movie, like the the rotten heart of America, and like the the the, the fact that you can't hide for the traumas of your past. So, do you do you agree with, with this? Uh, uh... I do, but I I will. I think it's more universal than you know. It's very easy to say it's the rotten heart of of the U.S. This is sadly something that very prophetically, you know, King wrote about in, you know, in the 80s, yeah. but that is happening all through the world um, with, you know, people using as tools of fear, religion, gender, economics, uh, race, um, all to divide and and create fear. Uh, that's one thing that I really like about your movie, is the fact that uh, um, you somehow uh, avoided all the uh, ambling effect of something that, uh, of, of a picture like Super 8, which is a great movie, mm -hmm. but it's so much based on Spielberg and so on. You, you put uh, some clever reference uh, in, in the movie, like the, the Gremlins poster and so on, but uh, how uh, being uh, an Argentinian helped you to deal with these decades that uh, has become so famous thanks to popular American movies and TV shows? Well, you know, we grew up in Argentina, um, but Argentina in, in the 80s um, had a lot of American references because we were watching their movies. Yeah. We were watching Spielberg, Dante Zemeckis, Lucas, all of these references that were uh, indelible uh, for us. But at the same time, of course, mixing them with our things, um, you know, the, the, the literature of, of Latin America that is so uh, personal. Um, and what you see in the, in the screen is, is very much the, a recreation of, you know, our childhood in, in style, which is, you know, um, an 80s that is on the realistic side. It's not a caricature of the 80s, at least we tried not to make it caricaturesque. It's what the 80s were like. Um, well, I grew up in the 80s, and my reality uh, growing up was not too different from a, from a teenage kid in, 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 in Maine, in a lot of senses. Of course, there's a lot of textural things that, that change uh, because America is a, is a very particular uh, country. But um, the, the essence of, and the spirit of, grow, of being a child and growing up is something that is you know, sort of universal. 
and the, you know the conflicts that you have to face when you're doing that you know when you come of age uh, I think it's universal and uh, yeah that's what, that's what I try try to connect and my, my, my personal connection with those characters I, I found them in my personal experience growing up so you actually went to, to Maine like for a couple of weeks while uh, uh, yeah. preparing the movie so yeah I went before like way before uh, the movie was greenlit because I wanted to know how Bangor was uh, not only geographically yeah. but also like I went to, to see the soul and the heart of that and, and it was awesome. So did you ever try to propose to Warner Bros. a new line to uh, make the movie, uh, the two movies back to back? Uh, no, no, I, I, I wanted to take it slow and, and <laughs> start with, with the beginning um, even though there is a sense, like I, I feel like that there's, there's a need to, to complete the story. So the second part is, is actually the second half. Uh, so if this is well, what you're going to see now is the first half of the movie or the, the, you know, the Losers Club, which is the, the, the story of the kids, of, of those characters when they were kids. But I think it's, yeah, I'm very, I, I, I really want to, to complete this so story. It, chapter two uh, is is it going to be your next movie, or are you planning to do Robotech first and then? No, no, no. My priority right now is doing the second half of, of this movie, and Robotech will, will maybe come come later. As my last and brief question, I know that you can't say anything about the casting of the second part, <laughs> but I guess that you'll have a long list of names uh, out of your door after the movie uh, came out. So. Uh, how is it working to live up the expectation of the audience and the great performances of the losers in the first one? You know, we cannot spend one second thinking about other people's expectations because, again, it creates fear, it creates paralysis. So I'm glad that everybody has an idea, but in the end, you know, it's Andy directing the film. Um, we are producing and uh, it's, it's, it's going to have to be a surprise, I hope. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Uh, that uh, is like, the second part is, is not happening yet. I mean, everybody wants to do it. I want to do it. The studio wants to do I it. I would but, like to uh, see it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But the moment that it, that it happens, it's going to happen very fast, hopefully. And uh, yeah, of course, I, have, I, I don't have the actors yet. I have certain criteria of what those would be, um, but yeah, I think they, it should be credible that these, the, you know, the adults are the same, the same persons that the kids. So there's a physical thing, attributes that I, I, I will be considering, but also there's a, there is more important is like the spirit, that they keep the same spirit. Uh, considering all the, the, the journey and those changes that the characters went through and all that, that period, but there's something that, that remains untouchable in those characters when they grow up. 30 years later, they, they, it's a natural you know, mechanism that uh, something uh, stayed a kid inside of them, because that's the only way that they could face uh, Pennywise 30 years later. So no, no, none of them get married, none of them get kids. Yeah, they, get, they got married, but they don't have kids. And it's, that's a, a, it's a big question why the, what they make themselves. Why did it happen? One last and brief question. Maybe are you going to have like a bigger budget for chapter two? Hopefully. <laughs>